So now we finally played the Halo Infinite tech preview, I want to give you guys my thoughts on it and what I think about Halo Infinite so far. In this video I will mention the things I dislike and what I like about Halo Infinite and what things could be improved. If you guys are new to the channel be sure to smack that like button and subscribe for more Halo content and let's begin the video. start off with is the main menu. Uh, now the main menu it looks great, I like the UI, though I do admit it doesn't look and feel like a Halo UI, how would you remember it in the previous games. Uh, Halo always had that blue style UI look to it. Uh, I wish T43 could add the color blue or something or at least uh, give us an option, you know, a customization option for the UI and maybe an option to change fonts uh, too. Uh, but so far the UI is clean. Uh, I still need to get used to it, I, I need to explore around the main menu you know to know where things are uh, i'm having problems of adding you know, adding and inviting people in in, in my match uh, it's something I need to get used to, it's something I need to you know, work around with. Uh, and lastly, what I want to mention though is the main menu music. It sounds remarkable. It's one of those uh, original Halo main menus from the older Halo games where you would sit through the... where you sit through just you know listening to the music for hours. It sounds phenomenal. But now it's like that in Halo Infinite. You know, you wouldn't want to keep on listening to the soundtracks while waiting the main menu. It gives me the chills, you know, it, the music sounds iconic in uh, Halo Infinite main menu. Okay, so let's head in game now. So soon as you enter in the game, now I did mention this a lot of times in my streams, I'm sure you guys know about it. I don't really like how you can see the Spartans doing these poses and the game showing off the map and I feel like it takes up too much time, you know? And hey, I don't really hate the stance or anything like that. I actually like them. They do look pretty cool. But I would prefer these if these stance, you know, would just appear in the multiplayer customization menu instead where you see your own Spartans doing their poses or whatever. I think it would be much better if they did that. Uh, I just think it takes up too much time. I just want to enter the game and start shooting players, you know, get to the point, you know? Another thing I dislike, there's too many people talking in game all at once and it gets too much. Like, first we have the announcer, which is Jeff, you know, doing the voice. Now we have our AI, AI, our personal AI, uh, Spartans chatting and the real players who use their mics. Uh, there's too much going on. Uh, however, there is an option where you can at least uh, take off your own Spartan, you know, talking and disable in-game voice chat so you don't hear other players speaking. Uh, hopefully they do the same thing, you know, uh, you know, give us options where you can take off the AI and other Spartans uh, speaking. I mean, it's a minor thing. I guess I'm being, you know, too nitpicky. Uh, something I probably, you know, get used to down the road. So moving on, personally, I dislike when the game tells you when and where the weapon spawns in exactly. It gives you, you know, too much info. This is what Halo 5 had and I feel like players will be camping in the same spot next to the weapon spawns or, or, or equipment. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, in the previous games, you need to have, you know, like knowledge, you know, to know when the weapon spawns in and where it spawns exactly. Uh, you need to memorize it. Uh, but who knows, maybe I like this idea. Uh, this could actually help uh, casual players you know, playing against sweaty players, you know, we'll see how it turns out, you know, when we do, you know, play PvP. Let's move on to the equipment. So far, we've only tried out three equipment in this build, which is the drop wall shield, the threat sensor, and the grapple hook. The drop wall shield plays fantastic. It really reminds me of the deployable cover and the bubble shield from Halo 3. You can carry the drop wall uh, up to two times, uh, so you can drop two walls uh, uh, on the ground, uh, which is dope. You can uh, barricade yourself around it too. Uh, and the grab hook is so is so fun to use, honestly. Uh, you can use it up to five times if you pick up the extra grapple. Uh, however, the grapple does uh, spawn in quickly. I feel like T3 should buff up the timer for it. Uh, but, other than, uh, but other than that, the grapple is uh, pretty balanced. It's just the timer they have to sort out. The, they, sh they really should work on the timer. But the grapple is on every map, which is cool. And maybe some game modes. Uh, now moving on to the threat center. Okay, I'll be honest. I don't know how exactly exactly this equipment works, but I believe it detects where the enemies are approaching and you can stick the threat sensor on the enemy and you can hear the beep noise as well to let you know where the enemies are. So it will be harder for them to, ca uh, to camp. Uh, I think that's how it works. Uh, do correct me if I'm wrong. Let's move on to the weapons. Now, the weapons overall are great. The assault rifle, as always, it kicks ass in every Halo game and so does the battle rifle. It feels and looks great, honestly. The battle rifle it looks way better compared to a Halo 5's battle rifle and the Halo 4 battle rifle. Uh, I think this competes, you know, you can compare this to Halo 3 and Halo 2. Uh, but there are some weapons that put me off a little, like the plasma pistol. Uh, at first, it looked okay, but the more I look at it and compare the plasma pistol to the other Halo games, 
it doesn't look that great. However, the sound of it when you charge the when you charge down the plasma pistol, you can hear the that classic plasma pistol sound. Uh, listen to this uh, uh, footage here. It sounds great, right? Uh, now, another weapon I dislike but also like at the same time is the Commando. And the reason why I dislike it because the weapon looks and sounds generic in my opinion. Uh, it looks like a weapon that belongs in Apex Legends or Call of Duty. Uh, they could have done a better job on it honestly. Uh, but what I like about the Commando is pretty powerful and it has a, a cool looking scope you know, to it. Uh, you can take down enemies, you know, from long range with this weapon. Uh, I do pick this, I do pick up this weapon over the assault rifle when it comes to, you know, killing players. And also the Bulldog shotgun. Again, it looks like a gun that's from Apex Legends and Call of Duty. I'll be honest, I am really bad at using the Bulldog, so I don't know how I feel about this weapon. I'm really hoping 343 brings back the original shotgun, because I really miss using that. I love using that. It's such an, such an iconic, uh, you know, looking shotgun. Uh, but I mean, I don't know. I'm not, I think it's, I'm not really feeling... The Bulldog Shotgun, I, I don't know, I'll probably enjoy it in the campaign rather than that multiplayer. Uh, it's just it's just very difficult for me to use. Honestly, I haven't really picked up the Bulldog Shotgun too much. Uh, maybe I should, uh, you know, give it a try, you know, just uh, practice, you know, using it. Uh, next weapon I really like using is the Heat Wave. Now, this weapon can do some serious, uh, serious damage. It's a killer machine. Uh, it works like the scatter shot from H4 and H5, uh, which is my favorite weapon. Um, uh, yeah, it's pretty OP. It, it doesn't have a scope to it, and and you can change the reticle so it fire uh, so it fires differently. The bullets uh, change in different directions, I believe. Uh, so next one we have here is the skewer. Again, it's an OP weapon, but it takes a, a while to reload and it's harder to aim at the enemies. So it does take a, a bit of skill, you know. Uh, but it's very fun to use. Uh, it's one it's one shot kill. It's like the binding rifle from H4, but it's harder to use. I have got. A few, a few no scope shots, uh, you know, with this. Um, so yeah, it does uh, take uh, a quite a bit of skill to use. Next one I want to mention is the sniper. Now, obviously, the sniper isn't a new weapon, but I do have a problem with it, and I think everyone else has a problem with it as well. And that is the reticle. It is ridiculously tiny. That does not look okay. It's so hard to aim. Like. I, I cannot do no scope shots. Uh, I mean, I did get a few, but it is super hard to aim with this uh, sniper. I want to put this out, point this out for T43. They should really increase the reticle. It does not look okay, but the sniper, you know, overall looks so good. Uh, one thing, I, one thing I want to mention about the reticle, reticle. I think the reason why the reticle is small is because the FOV is so high. So it decreases the size, the size for the reticle. I, I don't know if that's a bug. Or 343, you know, purposely wanted that, you know, wanted wanted to do that, uh, you know, make this a, as a future or something. Uh, I really don't know, but I hope they do increase the radical. This this does not look normal. So moving away from weapons, uh, a new feature they've added is the drop weapon system, and this feature is awesome. It's something we never had before in a Halo game. So basically, if your teammate wants your sniper. You no longer need to find another weapon just to drop the sniper for him. You can literally just drop it anywhere by pressing a button, whatever you, whatever you set your key to. I set my key to J, so I can just just drop it drop it on the uh, on the ground anytime, anywhere. Uh, for those who are asking, can you drop both weapons? Unfortunately, not. Uh, so you always be carrying that one weapon. Uh, but I'm really happy they've added this. Uh, they've added this future. Uh, another thing I want to mention are the maps and these three maps uh, are excellent. Uh, they are very fun to play on. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys noticed but none of these maps have uh, bad spawns. Like I never had a bad spawn uh, you know next to an enemy uh, so there was no spawn kills anything like that. Uh, but with the previous game with the, with the previous Halo games you always get spawn killed and it was very common. It was very frustrating but in Halo Infinite I haven't seen you know, uh, uh, spawning, you know, next to an enemy, you know, or an enemy spawning next to me. So I think the spawns in Halo Infinite might be very, very balanced compared to the other Halos. So let's talk about the abilities. And that is Sprint, Slide and Clambering. So let's start off with Sprint. And all I have to say, Sprint isn't even that bad in Halo Infinite, honestly. As I mentioned many times, you know, previously, it seems a lot slower than the previous games. But what I realized, I think Sprint might be unlimited. Uh, you could, I think there's unlimited sprint. I don't know if it's because we're playing against bots. Uh, maybe in PvP it might have a limit. Uh, I do hope that's the case. Uh, we should see. Uh, we want to slide. You know, slide. You know, the, the slide. You know, seems to be toned down uh, as well. You know, it, it was pretty OP in Halo Five. You can literally 
slide you know for a while but in infinite it's not that long so it's pretty short which i'm you know happy with and lastly clambering uh now clambering i don't really like uh still uh i feel like it's too cheap to get to places you know to get on to get to uh on top of platforms and and, and such uh, in the previous games you need to you know challenge yourself you know when it comes to jumping on platforms and also nade jumping oh i forgot to mention my nade jumping actually uh, yeah, you can't do nade jumping in Halo Infinite, unfortunately, which is so disappointing to know. I uh, hope in the final game we could do something like that again. But yeah, anyways, clambering. Yeah, clambering, clambering is too simple to get to places. Uh, I'm going to say it's, it's game breaking. It's just so... Uh, it's just too easy, easy to get to places around the map. Uh, but who knows? I'll probably like it. Again, it's something we all have to get used to. Uh, just like we all used to sprint. Another thing I dislike, well, more like I hate, actually. Uh, there's no collision. Uh, you, you can literally walk into your teammates. Uh, I really hate this future uh, because normally me and my teammates, you know, would try to, do, you know, to uh, jump on onto platforms if we didn't have a grenade or something like a boot shot. So we use each other's head to get onto platforms. Uh, I just hope there's an option for this uh, where you can uh, turn on uh, turn on collision for players. Uh, another thing I also dislike is medals. You know, I don't like how they look. They don't really look attractive, and I also don't like. Where it, sh where it appears on the screen. I much uh, you know, prefer it being on the left uh, um, and hopefully they, they look a bit bigger. So hopefully these, these medals that we're seeing are placeholders. Uh, moving on to the outlines. Um, yeah, the outlines, people have been asking me, what do you think of, uh, of the enemies uh, having outlines? Honestly, I don't mind it. You know, it's something I actually got really used to. I was skeptical at first when we first saw it in the trailers. Uh, but after playing the game, uh, my, uh, playing the game myself, it never really bothered me. But it would be nice if we can take off the uh, players' outlines and have the game tag show instead. Uh, but the way it is right now, I really don't mind it. I also really like the future they added is the ping future. Now, this uh, future really helps out a lot. It's basically a way of communicating, you know, telling teammates where the enemies are at exactly. Uh, so if you're playing solo and your teammates are not using their mics, you can just mark the mark a location and like literally anywhere, anytime where the, you know, where the enemies, you know, to show where the enemies are at. It's a very useful future. So I'm really happy T43, you know, added this future in. Okay guys, I think I said enough for today's video. I may have missed some things that I wanted to mention, so I do apologize if I did. So you guys are gonna ask me, what do you think of Halo Infinite? Do you like it? Are you confident where Halo Infinite is heading? And the answer is absolutely, absolutely yes. I, I had a blast playing Halo Infinite. I'm really impressed on what I've seen so far. I definitely enjoyed this way compared to Halo 4 and 5 combined and maybe Halo Reach. I could see myself enjoying Halo Infinite compared to Halo Reach, at least when it comes to PvP. Uh, but the question is, will I enjoy this compared to Halo 3? Uh, that's a tough one. We'll have to find out you know, when it releases. But there's, there is there is a chance where I probably will. What we need to remember, guys, this is only the uh, tech preview. It's not even in beta yet. Uh, we only play test three maps and one game mode, which is only against bots, uh, which are very hard to fight against, by the way. They are very good, surprisingly. Uh, but yeah, anyways, we still have a lot of things to look forward to. So yeah, I'm really proud on where Hidden Infinite is heading. I'm, I'm confident. Uh, anyways, I'm going to end the video here. If you guys really enjoyed this video, please do smack that like button, subscribe to the channel, and make sure to follow us on Twitch. And let me know down in the comments below, uh, are you guys in the flight test? Have you guys played Hidden Infinite? Do you guys enjoy it? Uh, what do you guys think? Uh, we'll look to read your comments down below. And I see you Spartans in the next video. Bye.